thanks. Well, well, uh, thanks for the invitation. Uh, no, lithium is uh, first. My name, as, uh, as it was said, Gabriel Ram, Gabriel Bacha. I'm current CEO of No Lithium. I've been in this business for more than 30 years. I spent uh, more than 25 years executing projects in in the region, Argentina and Chile. I was a managing director of an engineering construction company, uh, one of the largest in the region. And then I spent uh, the last uh, seven years in lithium companies, uh, especially in Lithium Americas, where I was a board member and I was president of South American operations. NOAA was funded uh, early 2022 uh, by a group of uh, Argentinians uh, with experience in mining and Argentina, um, and where we put together a, a three different blocks in three different salars. Uh, we secure the land packages for to form uh, what it is right now, more than 100,000 hectares of uh, property, mining properties in, in three different salars in the Salta province, which is the most friendly jurisdiction in the region, if not in, in South America. Um, the, the founders, two of the founders, uh, Hernan and myself, are the biggest sh shareholders uh, of the company. And now we are managing and leading uh, this effort from Argentina in order to get a grip of what is going on in the, in the development of our three properties in Salta. We got a main a milestone ahead of us, which is in Q1 next year, uh, in order to provide to get a maiden resource for one of the projects that we got, which is Rio Grande. As it was mentioned before, uh, Argentina, together with Bolivia and Chile, formed the Lithium Triangle, and and which a uh, a uh, get approximately 50% of lithium resource in the world and 20% of that is located in Argentina and several salars in the northwest por, uh, part of Argentina. Uh, the, the advantage of Argentina uh, to Chile and Bolivia is uh, Argentina is a federal country and the resources belong to the, each one of the provinces and the lithium is not considered strategic strategic mineral, which is much, much easier to develop projects in Argentina right now. Uh, many uh, multinational companies are operating in Argentina, uh, Chinese, Korean, Australian, Canadians, uh, and, and then lithium is being produced in Argentina since the uh, late 1990s. Uh, where the first uh, lithium company was established in Argentina at the time was FMC. Nowadays, uh, besides the international companies, there are also several Argentinian oil and gas companies that are trying to get involved in the lithium business. Uh, so uh, it's, it's a booming uh, sector uh, with a lot of opportunities. There are currently the two companies that are producing. The third one uh, will start uh, producing commercially uh, by the end of this year and several others that are starting to produce, will start producing in 2024. Um, this is pretty much the Northwest uh, Argentina where you can see several salar salt flats uh, that are pretty close one to the other. This uh, comprises three provinces in, in the northwest Argentina, which is Jujuy, Salta and Catamarca. Uh, but uh, as I said before, uh, Salta is the most friendly jurisdiction to develop mining uh, opportunities. And we got all the three uh, main projects that we got in the province of Salta, which are the, the blue dots that we got there. Uh, and we shared some of those salars with other players in, in the in the market. Um, if we go to 
the the first one is, is Rio Grande. Um, Rio Grande is a it wasn't explored before. I mean, it wasn't exploited uh, so far. Uh, we share this salar with another company, uh, which is Plus Petrol. It's a private company. It's an oil and gas uh, Argentinian company. Uh, and we decided to start a, a exploration in this salar because there was previous information from from other companies that are explored this salar in, uh, in the 2011 and 2018. Uh, so we had information from the past, uh, previous available information, and we performed geophysics last year that uh, allow us to get a more knowledge of where to drill and what to drill. Um, we got a significant land package of 37,000 hectares. Uh, as you can see, the blocks are uh, marked in 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 the in the map. Uh, some properties are within the salar, the salt crust of the salar. Some others are outside the salar. But just to to understand, the salar or the brines that uh, contain the lithium are not just on the salt crust because the brine goes beyond the boundaries of this salt crust because originally those these uh, uh, lakes or salt flats uh, were much much larger than what it is seen right now. Um, uh, the other thing is that uh, most of the major players right now are exploring uh the outside the boundaries of the salt flats because it is it was found that a uh, more concentration it's found outside this the the salt crust than a uh, than within the the salar and we are validating that that hypothesis um in the uh, this is the uh, previous uh trailing uh, that was done in the salar so it was a lot of information available that's why we knew before we started drilling in Rio Grande that uh, there was lithium uh, it was just a matter of identifying which concentration we have in in our exact properties but some of these drilling that were shallow uh, are pretty close to our properties uh, at that time, it was drilled up to 100 meters, um, and it was found concentration of 300 milligrams per liter. We'll we'll talk about that later whether this is uh, something meaningful or not. Uh, so, with that information plus some geophysics that we perform in a, a last year, we identified. Out of the 37,000 hectares, approximately 15,000 that uh, are with uh, confirmed lithium or high potential brines with uh, lithium content. Those are the areas uh, in blue and pink uh, in this map. So, so what we define. Uh, last year at the end of the last year before we go public uh, and is to uh, execute or perform a drilling campaign that includes uh, six drill holes uh, of approximately five to six hundred meters deep each uh, three in the northeast uh, properties uh, that we got and the other three within the solar. We started uh, this drilling campaign in March, right a few days after that uh, we got listed in the Toronto Stock Exchange. Um, and uh, we uh, started with one rig and we started, as you can see, the, the arrow in the north uh, property, uh, we found 
approximately 230 meters of lithium brine units, um, which is significant, uh, with the two aquifers, one with an average of uh, 430 milligrams per liter and the other with a uh, much higher with uh, 770 milligrams per liter as an average with a maximum of 925 milligrams per liter, which is comparable to the, the highest concentrations that you can find in in other salars, specifically the Salar del Hombre Muerto, which is the highest concentration salar in Argentina. We continue drilling, and the second drill hole was on the property uh, within the salar, right in the middle. Uh, uh, again, the, we found a much thicker uh, land, uh, a package of uh, brines uh, with uh, approximately 300 meters of uh, lithium brine survey units uh, with a more consistent uh, concentration. The first part with 440 as an average and the, the deeper one of close to 500 milligrams per liter. Uh, with again, with maximum of 550 milligrams per liter which is uh, very good in terms of a volume that we found uh, of brine. And the third one that we are completing and assays are still pending that are gonna be published likely next, next week. Uh, we drill more than 600 meters uh, of, uh, in that well. Uh, we found more than 500 meters of lithium brine salary units. Uh, so far, the concentration is in line with, with what we found in the other two drill holes. So this is going to be the uh, the beginning. We're going to our plan is to finalize the this phase one of the campaign, the six drill holes before the end of the year. Uh, we mobilize a second rig, so we got two rigs currently operating uh, in Rio Grande, uh, and we already engage uh, Montgomery and Associates, which is a, a technical service company, to start quantification of the, the resource that we got uh, as a maiden resource in this salar. The second project that we got is uh, is Arizaro, which is a little bit uh, north of Rio Grande. I'll show you in the previous slide. Uh, is Rio Grande is on the bottom of the blue dot on the bottom, and north west of, of that is Arizaro, which is the largest. A salar in Argentina. So <clears throat> we got the 35,000 hectares of uh, properties there. Um, there are multiple players currently working in Arizaro doing very early stage exploration. Some local companies like Plus Patrol and some other international like, like Eramet, Tibet Summit, Hanak, Lilac. So they're all, all interested in this salar that is pretty much unexplored so far. There, are, there is not much uh, public information besides what uh, Lithium Chile have published, which uh, give us a little bit of confidence of the, the, the lithium content in this salar. Uh, Lithium Chile already published um, uh, a drill hole with a 500 milligrams per liter at a not not a much a depth, so we are confident. Our plan is to start drilling in Arizaro uh, early next year. Uh, one of the properties that we got it's already permitted to start drilling right away, and the others we expect to get uh, permits in place by the end of this year. Uh, our, our plan 
uh, in terms of uh, Arizaro is to to use our facilities in Rio Grande because it's pretty close, and then we set some uh, clo much closer facilities at Rio at Arizaro in order to facilitate the activities. As you can see in this slide here, uh, the the Lithium Chile information it's aligned with our north properties uh, and uh, we're gonna target not only these properties in the north but also in the south where some of the information uh, that we got from geology and geophysics uh, give us confidence that uh, it's going to be probably better than in the north the <clears throat> Third salar or third project that we got that we got uh, approximately ten thousand hectares. It's uh, in Salinas Grandes. Salinas Grandes is a salar that uh, is is shared by two provinces. Uh, all our properties again are on the Salta side, not on the Jujuy side. Um, the Salinas Grandes is one of the uh, salars that uh, got uh, probably better uh, chemistry in terms of lithium. There's a lot of information available uh, from third parties. We already performed some geophysics and uh, there uh, and validated that we got brines uh, under our properties. Uh, but there is published information uh, with, uh, with chemistry that is good in terms of concentration and other minerals associated with the with the brine. Uh, the advantage also of Salinas Grande that is much closer to the capital city of the province of Salta and the, the, the access to Salinas Grande is much, much easier than in the other projects. So we are confident that here, even though we got a smaller land package, it's, it's, it's very, very uh, interesting in terms of potential that we got here in Salinas Grandes. Which is our plan uh, for 2023 and, and going forward. Um, 2023, our target is to focus our attention in Rio Grande, uh, complete the trailing campaign, uh, and be ready to to get all the information necessary to get the maiden resource. Um, 2024, start uh, working in Arizaro, which is our second project, and publish maiden resource for Rio Grande. In, in terms of why we want to have maiden resource, because with that, we can start quantify what is the value associated with uh, the project and we can go there in a minute. Uh, so next year focuses maiden resource, start working in Arizaro and while we continue drilling Rio Grande and uh, increase the resource that we're going to publish as a maiden resource. And in late 2024, early 2025, the plan is to start drilling in uh, uh, Salinas Grandes so we can start putting a value of, on that project. So basically what we are planning is one year to each project and in three years have resource uh, determined in, in each one of the projects that we got. Uh, what is the capital structure of, of the company? Um, approximately 110 million shares out. Uh, in terms of management and founders, uh, we got 30% of the shares. Uh, there are warrants for another uh, close to 100 million. Uh, out of those, 40% are held by management and founders. There are some options there on our market cap based on the current, uh, this is uh, as of September, early September, our current market cap is approximately 40 million Canadian. Uh, cash balance as of 
uh, September 1st, 6 million Canadian. Uh, and fully diluted cash position with all the warrants that we got in place, approximately the another 38 million, uh, including the cash available. So it's a, it's a good position that we got in terms of uh, cash and, and, and potentially with the warrants. Uh, some of the warrants, uh, as I said, that are held by founders and seed capital are going to be exercised in shortly in order to provide additional capital and start cleaning the, the warrants uh, in, the, in the company. As uh, mentioned before, that I was uh, wanted to tell you, the concentration that, that we got in the three projects are aligned with uh, the best salars that are being explored or exploited uh, in Argentina. We are talking about above 450, 500 milligrams per liter, which is very good. Uh, we, because not only because of the concentration, but also because we'll provide the flexibility to mm, go to a traditional process, which is the evaporation ponds uh, or the DLE direct lithium extraction, which is the, the, the process that uh, the salars with the lowest concentration are going, but uh, still to be proven and say something that uh, needs to have further development. So the concentration that we got right now provides this flexibility going forward into the uh, development and, uh, and, and projects execution in terms of process definition. In terms of uh, why we wanted to start uh, evaluating the, the company, in order to evaluate the company, we need to start working on the resource. Uh, based on the recent transactions that have uh, been done in the last, uh, I would say, two years, um, uh, and considering the, the resource and the grades or the concentration uh, or on the salars, um, the, the calculation is that for each 1 million tons of resource at about 400 milligrams per liter, it is estimated, it is valued in 150 million Canadian for each 1 million ton. Uh, so we are confident that uh, our main source for just one of the project, which is Rio Grande, the one that we are currently drilling, is going to be uh, got potential for much more than this. Uh, but we don't want to say anything until we get a quantification of that. But uh, having one million ton of uh, resource is something reasonable and uh, achievable. Uh, easily, uh, even with the few drill holes that we get. Uh, so, based on the current market evaluation, market cap of the company, we are talking about three times what we currently get as market cap. This is basically what I got to show you, and uh, I'm open to questions, whatever you need. Excellent. Uh, thank you so much, Gabriel. Um... Could you just uh, elaborate a little bit about the difference between the uh, Chilean approach to mining versus the Argentinian? Because you mentioned that Argentina was very positive towards uh, mining in this in, in this sector. Yeah, <clears throat> basically Chile uh, defined lithium as a strategic mineral. Uh, there are two things. Uh, first of all, uh, it was a change in the in the approach in Chile, where the the for, let's go from the beginning. Chile is not a federal country. Uh, it's all all the resources belong to the central government or or the the, the country, not the provinces. Uh, I, in Argentina, belongs to the provinces. Uh, the lithium in, in Chile uh, it is a strategic mineral. Uh, in order to exploit uh, the lithium in Chile, you had to get a permit, then not just environmental uh, assessment in order to develop a project, but also a permit from the 
national atomic energy, uh, which is not easy and you need a lot of support uh, to get it from the national government. Having said that, uh, there is there were some changes going forward in order to to develop a project in Chile. You have to be associated with the national government at, through uh, national entities. So it's a partnership from now on. Uh, there are there is a regimen of quotas in terms of uh, what you can produce, um, and uh, and the use of water is a. Um, very serious restriction in Chile. Uh, in Argentina, the resources belong to the provinces. You, there is everything is set up in terms of uh, what you pay to the province. Uh, you have to get uh, the obviously the uh, uh, environmental permits uh, from the provinces. Uh, there are no quotas. Uh, lithium is is uh, it's another mineral, like it could be copper, or silver, or gold. It's, it's just another one. Um, it's it's pretty straightforward. So one could say that it's less red tape in Argentina, and uh, then uh, I would argue then maybe you should be trading as at the premium to your uh, Chilean peers because uh, life would be easier as long as you're a good citizen. Would that be? Would that be? Yeah, that, that was. It, it wasn't the case before. No. I mean, uh, it, it was easier doing business in mining in Chile than in Argentina. But in lithium, in particular, now Argentina is much much easier than doing business in Chile. As a matter of fact, uh, there are only two projects uh, in Chile. Even though they got the largest, uh, the, the resource in Chile is much larger than in Argentina. There are there are only two companies operating in Chile: SQM and Albermar, uh, uh, which uh, were in Argentina. There are multiple companies operating. And that's uh, that's a very uh, that's an excellent segue to my next question because you had a, a slide here with the Rio Grande projects, and one could see the neighbors, uh, as it were, to, to, to uh, your. And th they seem to be like who is who in the, uh, in the mining industry. Um, so uh, with that in mind, uh, would you be looking for a partner with the, with the Rio Tintos and the Poscos of the worlds? Um, and uh, do you cooperate vis-a-vis uh, -vis infrastructure or is it the other way around? Let me show you where we are here. Uh, our neighbor here is Plus Petrol. Uh, it's an oil and gas company. Uh, we are sharing roads. We are trying to share whatever we can do uh, together. Uh, but each one is uh, doing their own business. It's a natural partner, let's put it this way, to have Plus Petrol as a partner to us. Uh, but so far, what we are doing is uh, sharing the roads. We're going to share even costs associated with maintenance of the roads. Uh, we are sharing information, but this is it. In terms of uh, going forward, uh, at this point in time, we like to say that uh, we are an exploration company for the time being. We wanted to maximize uh, the evaluation of our companies uh, through exploration uh, that the appropriate time uh, if there is a convenient proposition for the shareholders uh, we we can look into a partnership with uh, some other uh, company uh, but for the time being what we are doing is going step by step trying to minimize the dilution of our shareholders and raising money as we need. And uh, w w one question here then to, to wrap up here is, um, you, you, you had a slide about the lithium price, but uh, as being an explorer uh, at this point, how important would the, the lithium price be? Uh, one could argue that uh, the, the demand will definitely increase, but if the lithium price goes up and down by 10% as we speak, does it really affect your uh, activities? Not the activity. I mean, it, it is affecting the, the share price of all of us. Uh, that That is a, is, is a reality. But uh, if you recall, uh, like uh, four years ago, uh, all the projects were uh, evaluated in, in between 10 and $12,000 per ton. 
until or the feasibilities were done at that range, uh, which is very good for the projects. At this point in time, even though the price is in the uh, high 30s, 30,000, um, most of the feasibility of the studies are uh, done with the <clears throat> with evaluation of the long term on the 20s, 20s, uh, middle 20s, uh, thousand. So evaluation it's it's important, but uh, again with the the long term pricing and the shorter studies, the shortage of lithium is going to remain for quite a few years. Um, long term, considering 20 plus thousand per ton is more than reasonable, considering that the OPEX of projects in, in, in solars, in salt flats are in the neighborhood of 5000 per ton, which is still very convenient. Yeah, so, so the, um, uh, uh, the round and short would be really that uh, test results uh, at your stage now is more important than, than uh, the, the price development. Yeah. Yeah, and and uh, you, you mentioned uh, first quarter uh, 2024, so, so that would be the next most important thing to to look for for the market and for yourself. Is that correct? Yes, correct. Okay, excellent. Well, thank you for that, Gabriel. Uh, very interesting. Uh, this is a, a, a very hot sector, um, but it's important to know that the demand is still out there and the price fluctuations may not really affect uh, the output for next year or uh, the coming years. So uh, mm. if anyone would have any more questions, uh, they would be uh, forwarded to your uh, web page, I, I take it, to your home page, okay. Gabriel? Yeah. Yeah. That's that's fine. Yep. In that case, we wish you uh, best of luck, not that you need it, and uh, uh, we'll speak to you later.